this is my new inner system I'm gonna try. Do you like them? Uh, I never used them. You see if I get fired, huh? Seems <laughs> <laughs> like it better work. It better work. <laughs> so if you've ever played a concert, a local gig, or even played at church, you probably have heard of wireless in-ear monitoring systems. Basically all they are, are a way that you can hear yourself and the people around you when you're on concerts or on gigs. These have been revolutionary over the past 10 years and it has been a huge craze with a lot of companies. But the one thing that has been an issue with these type of systems is that they are so expensive. These can range from upwards to like $1,800 to $2,000 for a really nice set. But here recently, there has been a few companies that have tried to change that and make a budget-friendly version for us musicians. So today, we're going to be taking this $200 wireless in-ear system on a pro gig. I hope this works. So the first thing I gotta do is text our front of house engineer with this artist because he usually brings our wireless in-ear systems with him. I have to let him know and see if it's even okay for me to bring my own wireless in-ear system. So I'm gonna give him a text right now. Hey Josh, do you think it would be okay if I brought my own in-ear wireless unit for this one show? We'll see what he says. And the other thing is that I have to learn how to use this because I haven't even unboxed this yet and I leave for the road tomorrow. So basically this comes with a pack, which is what you cook, hook your headphones into right here at the top. And then there is the wireless unit so you can uh, actually connect to it wirelessly. You could actually even be hardwired to say this is not charged or something you could actually use headphones as well in here. On the back here, it's stereo. It's a stereo system. And so you have two two inputs. So you got a left and a right. And so if you want to go mono, you could just through one channel, but I'm going to try and go stereo when we're doing this live on the gig. And yeah, these are my in-ears, by the way, juicy ears. I have juicy ear fives. So I'm excited to see what happens with this on the gig. All right, so Josh just reached back out to me and was like, sure, what do you have that actually be a huge help for this weekend? Which is awesome. So it seems like this is actually coming at a perfect time. So I'm gonna just take a picture, send him the specs and anything information he needs and pack it up and head to Washington. Today's video is sponsored by Phoenix Pro, but I want to let you know that anytime I accept the sponsorship, I always make sure I tell them that I'm going to be truthful and honest about your product in the video, and that's just a requirement for any of my sponsorships. So as you watch this video, know that everything that I'm saying is truthful and honest. All right, so we are here in Seattle and uh, getting ready to jump on the last flight to Wenatchee, Washington, I'm waiting on a couple of friends. So I think I'm just going to sit here and try and read through this manual and just in case there's some like, I don't know there's some things I'm missing because I know sometimes they have frequency issues and stuff. Hello, say hello. Hi. We're going to Wenatchee. Wherever that is. Wherever that is. <laughs> All right, so we just got to Washington to our final destination in Wenatchee. And I'm not even gonna lie, I'm so tired right now. So I'm going to uh, hit the hay and uh, we're gonna get up and have a full day tomorrow. He brought his own, so he'll be the only one stereo. No, no, sir. Yes, sir. Are you serious? Yes, sir. No. I made a good choice. I'm going to be stereo, right? No, sir. Did you bring your own in here, right? So I think I made the right choice. All right, so we're here at Sage Hills here in Wenatchee, Washington. This is one of the most beautiful parking lots I've ever seen. We just got here, we're getting ready to load in, and I honestly am ready to get this sound check over with and go look at the mountains, but uh, here for a job. So I've got to figure out how to get this set up and get it wired out through the system. I'm gonna try and also use it, uh, the wireless rig, as a way to record for Instagram and for YouTube as well, because there is a way that I can possibly send my mix out while I'm using my wireless pack, which if they could do this, this would be a game changer. So 
that's what I'm going to try to figure out real quick in, uh, during our sound check. But yeah, this is going to be really fun if this works. Now, something to note is that the pack itself, the wireless body pack, has a metal belt clip, but pretty much outside of that, it's all plastic. And it takes double A batteries, which was very good for me because the uh, other packs took double A batteries as well. So I was just able to get some new ones from this audio guy there. Now the display on the receiver and the transmitter is black and green, which is a little different than a lot of uh, setups that you would see out there for wireless systems. But I think the reason why it is is so it doesn't show up and is not like really bright when the lights are out, which happens at a lot of concerts. Now at the top of the body pack, there is a power button that you hold to turn on. And then there's also a volume knob. And honestly, the volume from this thing is actually really, really strong, which is not always the same with these budget in-ear systems. All right, so Josh just asked me about potentially moving uh, my receiver unit to the board, which is like back over here. Is the sound console, you think, is that under 100 feet from here? Dude, I gotta tell you, yes. I am, yes. Davy says yes. 75. 75. I was going to say, I am the absolute worst at quantifying distances. <laughs> if you told me that was 300 feet away, I would believe you. But, <laughs> but David D says it's 75. The receiver right now is like right here by my pedals and everything, which which is fine and all, which he's cool with. But he just, just for, I guess, cleanliness and different things like that. And that's where every, all the other receivers are. And so he, he was thinking just putting it back there. So what I'm going to have to figure out is read the manual and see what the actual operational range is for it, how far it's actually built to go, because I don't know if it's actually built to go that far or to extend that far. Or the, the range this of this is 160 feet. Yeah, so. I'm gonna, we're running this. Yeah, I was going to put it back there and it would be fine. But we're just uh, running this cable and just have a piece of line. Okay. So this would be at the top of its like range, operational range, being 160 feet, like if, if it was over there and this room was a normal size. Yeah, so that's also a clear line of sight. Mm. And you're not going to wear your pack on the front of your chest. Yeah. So that range is going to go down if it's mounted behind you. I got you. Yeah, so, so that's a really <laughs> short range. I see a lot of the digital stuff like mm -hmm. 100 feet or so but 300 feet is a typical range for that frequency band i got you it's like the higher numbers don't get as much mm -hmm. they don't have as much throw it seems i got you. the 2.4 stuff what's this guy doing <laughs> hey dad so what would you say was the best part of that interview just now <laughs> <laughs> So rehearsal was cool and everything, but I will say there was some things I had to figure out. Um, one thing is that I thought we were going to be able to go stereo, but the system that we're at today only goes mono. And so because of that, um, I had to figure out how to make it go mono because it's standard in stereo. So I had to read the manual to try to figure out what to do there. Um, and it was pretty easy to figure out. Once I figured it out, it was a lot better. And then what was really cool is I was able to hook up my iRig to the wireless rig, which is something I've been trying to figure out for a long time now. But on this particular one, you can send a hardwired signal to your iRig so you can either go live or record the audio straight up from your wireless mix and not be hooked up anywhere, which is really, really dope. And I've been trying to figure it out for a long time now. But outside of that, man, it was actually really good. So I'm excited to see how it does tonight for the concert, so stick around.
So we just finished the concert tonight and it went really good. You know, I, honestly, using a piece of equipment that's like 200 bucks, that's an inner system that's so, so important, can be very, very um, nerve wracking, I will say. But there was only a couple moments. It had, a, it had some RF interference tonight. Uh, but just that's normal with any pack. Uh, so, and, but I think also having it right next to me was very helpful. Outside of that, um, it was really, really great to uh, just kind of have my own. It was it, because I could just take it with me, didn't have to, anything to worry about. And also I was able to record tonight's entire concert just off of my inner mix, which was a lot a lot of fun and i'm going to be using this for sure again and i'm actually i'm really excited and happy that i did this experiment and man i made it and i didn't get fired thank god <laughs> i was a little bit worried so i am so excited to use this again and if you guys are interested feel free to check in my description for a link to the product so you can buy one for yourself. If any of you guys already use this Phoenix Pro Wireless Inner System, let me know what you think in the comments. And also let me know what you think about this style video as well. If you're interested in purchasing this wireless in-ear system, I have it linked in my description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.